all right this is seriously cool okay so we're going to be calculating the gain of, of common drain amplifiers so this is one of the amplifiers given to us whose gain we have to calculate um, I'm just hoping that you've watched the videos prior to this because I'm going to be deriving a lot from there and and not do do everything over again so if you want to know which which lecture was before this one just go to anarati.com and uh, I think in the video uh, the links to video lectures you'll find the entire sequence the proper sequence uh, in order of, of, of what you had to watch before you get here okay so um, so hopefully you've asked to watch the previous video what we're gonna do here is we're gonna calculate the gain of this um, amplifier alright so what, what this is basically is just uh, the simple one we've seen before RS and V out and uh, VN and VDD you know this is the common drain amplifier we've seen all this time right so what we've done here is just replaced RS by this transistor because we cannot use discrete resistances and also that it is driving a load resistance called RL okay all right so let's go ahead and derive the gain for this uh, first we draw the small signal model I'm gonna draw it first and then explain how we get there okay so this is V in as usual most of it is pretty uh, intuitive, not a big deal. So this is 1 over GMB, and uh, this is GMV1. And I forgot to tell you one thing. In this example, and a few more examples to come, we're going to be considering uh, the channel length modulation. OK? So channel length modulation is being considered here and here's V out and here's RL okay and, and here we're gonna have RO1 and also RO2 now what are these these are the resistance coming com resistances coming from the consideration of the channel length modulation okay now you might start wondering as to where the other GMs are right because there are two transistors here and we're just considering one, basically. So where th where's the other, right? So that's what we have to understand. First of all, let's derive the gain from this model itself, right? So if we do the Thevenin and equivalent, what do we get? We get uh, something like this, V in, and uh, one over GM one. And if you consider this as V out, we have all these four resistances again. RL, RO2, RO1, and 1 over GMB1. Okay? So what's the gain of the circuit? V out over V in is basically just this, right? Um, 1 over GMB1 in parallel with R01, parallel with R02, parallel with RL over the same thing, right? So 1 over GMB1 parallel with R01, parallel with R02, parallel with RL plus this resistance right here, 1 over GM1, right? So that's all it is, not a big deal, right? Um they're connected here like this now and this is what is AV right now I want to show you a method where you don't have to draw the entire small signal model or the feminine equivalent and directly arrive at this point right so that's what is really exciting about this lecture at this video right so uh, let's go ahead and draw this all over again, right? So this is M2. This is VB for the, for M2, V in for M1, and this is V out right here, and this is RL, right? Okay. 
So in our previous lectures, what have we spoken about? We've spoken about the resistance seen at this node, right? The output node. So let's see what all is connected there. Since we have channel modulation, you're going to have R01 here and R02 here, OK? In, in, in this video, I might make a lot of technically incorrect steps. I mean, I might take a lot of technically incorrect steps, but they're all just to make you understand. And it gets really, really simple. They're like super beautiful shortcuts. Okay. And um, all right. So let's go ahead. So we have R01, we have R02, we have RL. We need to account for 1 over GM and 1 over GM before both the transistors, right? Now let's look at what GM is first of all. GM is delta ID over delta VGS, right? That means this this transconductance is between the gate and the source. So let's just go ahead and do a little thing here, right? So say this is a resistance and this is one over GM. All right. Again, I'm saying this is not necessarily like this. It's just to make you understand. In fact, it's just to make me understand. <laughs> All right. And and we also let me take a different color. We also have the bulk. Right, the, the red dotted line is the bulk for both the transistors, red or whatever color that is. And GMB is delta ID over delta VSB, right? Or BS, I think it's SB. So this is the source to bulk voltage. That means between the source to bulk is this connection right and it's called 1 over GMB right and the same thing applies here see 1 over GMB2 and here 1 over GM2 and this is 1 and 1 okay now see at this branch where the output is being taken right what all resistances are connected first of all we have GM1, we have G1 over GMB1, we have RL, and we also have RO2, right? But we do not have 1 over GMB2 or 1 over GM2. Do you see that? They're not connected to this very branch. They're connected from the source to the gate of the second transistor and from the source to the bulk of the second transistor, but not at this output output node. Okay, now let me make a really, really ugly drawing, but then it's really cool to understand. So suppose this is that output node I'm talking about, okay? So let me grab a different color. We have 1 over GMB1, we have RO1, we have RO2, we have RL, uh, that's it, right? And, and of course, we have this 1 over GM from here, right? And if you look here, and even in the previous problem we did, in the previous uh, 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 video, what we did was we drew the small signal model, and always the 1 over GM one appears like here, right? In, in series with the VN. So uh, when you do the potential dividers thing, it always comes at the bottom adding up with whatever was in the numerator, right? It, this is a very crude way of remembering it, but it's a really, really fast way of, of solving for gain. Okay, so w w basically the, the definition of parallel resistances is that they start at the same point, right? And they probably end up at, at the ground or some other point, but they all have the same common starting point, right? That, that's why the current branches into parallel paths. So they're all connected in parallel. So now look at what your gain is going to be. Right? All the parallel ones. So 1 over GMB1, parallel with RO1, parallel with RO2, parallel with RL, over the same thing, 1 over GMB1, parallel with RO1, parallel with R2, parallel with RL, plus 1 over GM1. Right? Just remember that this is one the, the GM term is going to get added later on, okay? That's all it is. If this doesn't excite you, I don't know what will. 
right? We have two more problems, um, and I'm, I'm going to make another video of them. Okay, but is this very clear? So if not, just it, it's just YouTube. So go ahead, rewind it, watch it again, right? And uh, hopefully it didn't go very fast. And um, I just love this method. It's very, very fast. Okay, so again, don't get confused here. It's just whatever, whatever is connected there, right? So, and we're not considering the GM and GMB of the second transistor because they're not connected basically to the output uh, branch, if you see, right? They don't get there. All right, perfect. We're going to do two more problems. And uh, of course, even before watching them, you need to be very thorough with what I've done here, all right? Because that'll be like a breeze if you follow what, you, what I've done here. Perfect. I loved this lecture and I hope you loved it too. See ya.